Welcome to a new episode of Alternative Perspective. In this episode, our spotlight is on Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Anthony Fauci is accused of funding highly controversial gain of function research. When we were exploring the history of this gain of function research, we were faced with many difficult and uneasy questions. We are going to look at all these matters in this current episode. We are also going to raise certain questions for the government of India, that is Narendra Modi-led BJP government in India. Kindly watch this episode till the very end in order to get your perspective right. As of today, Anthony Fauci serves as the fifth director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases in the United States of America. Anthony Fauci had a long association with National Institutes of Health that is NIH in the United States of America. Anthony Fauci was part of President Trump's coronavirus response team. He is also the chief medical advisor to the President of the United States of America that is Joe Biden. Anthony Fauci is part of leadership council of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. He is also a strong advocate of Bill Gates mass vaccination push. Surprisingly enough, this Anthony Fauci could foresee that there would be an infectious disease outbreak during Trump's presidency. Let's watch this video clip. He was lecturing at Georgetown University Medical Center on January 12, 2017. Given, as you heard from the introduction, that I have been around for a while and have had the opportunity and, and the privilege and the pleasure of serving in five administrations, um, I thought I would bring that perspective to the topic today is the issue of pandemic uh, preparedness. And if there's one message that I want to leave with you today based on my experience, and you'll see that in a moment, is that there is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. And I hope by the end of my relatively short presentation, you will understand why history, the history of the last 32 years that I've been the director of NIAID will tell the next administration that there's no doubt in anyone's mind that they will be faced with the challenges that their predecessors were faced with. So for those who think that infectious diseases is gone, there's so many people who've made foolhardy statements not knowing at the time that they made them. I usually show a quote from an old surgeon general or an old uh, pundit in infectious disease. So I thought I'd pull this one out from Sir McFarlane Burnett, who was actually a, uh, a Nobel Prize winning immunologist, uh, who made the statement, as many did, to write about infectious diseases is almost to write of something that has passed into history. The most likely forecast about the future of infectious diseases is that it will be very dull, uh, which is really kind of interesting coming from a semi-genius like McFarlane Burnett. And I think what he did in the mistake that so many people have made is something that several of our panelists have already referred to. And that is a failure to look beyond our own borders in the issue of the globality of health issues. Not only things that are there that will come here, but surprises that we have. Following the outbreak of novel coronavirus, a team of researchers from IIT Delhi published a research paper in January 2020, in which they opined that the novel coronavirus bears the telltale sign of genetic engineering and may not have resulted from natural evolution or natural mutation. Anthony Fauci is quick to discredit this paper saying that it was outlandish. However, the IIT Delhi research paper inspired Nobel laureate French virologist Professor Luc Montagnier who in an interview with French C News opined that the virus might be the handiwork of professional molecular biologists. Today, Anthony Fauci is being accused of funding highly controversial gain-of-function research. Gain-of-function implies the enhanced transmissibility and virulence of a pathogen such as SARS-CoV-2 that causes cross-species infection. 
However, Fauci and his gang kept justifying this research by saying that this research is intended to reveal targets to better predict the emerging infectious diseases and to develop vaccines and therapeutics in the event of an imaginary pandemic that might occur in near future. Here we can see Anthony Fauci reacting to the IIT Delhi research paper that I have talked about. This particular mail was sent by Anthony Fauci to Francis Collins on February 2nd, 2020. That is right after the publication of the research paper by the IIT Delhi team. Anthony Fauci comments that this Indian research paper looks really outlandish. Recently, a whole host of emails from this Anthony Fauci has been leaked to the media. And from this leaked emails, this particular email and this particular snapshot has been taken. Some of the Republicans are now contemplating on the Fire Fauci Act, but in reality, both Republicans and Democrats are complicit to this crime against humanity. Successive American governments joined hands with the deep state criminal syndicate to fulfill their agenda. And now, when this pandemic is getting exposed, American political establishment is trying to save its face and nothing else. In fact, this gain of function research got its first proof of concept way back in 2011 when a Dutch virologist and a close AD of Anthony Fauci called Ron Fouché created a mutant variant of H5N1 avian influenza virus that could spread among mammals such as ferrets without direct contact that is through airborne transmission. Ron Fouché is a Dutch virologist and he is a professor at Erasmus Medical Center at Rotterdam, Netherlands. He and his team use genetic engineering techniques and serial infection of ferrets to create a mutant variant of H5N1 virus that could spread among ferrets without direct contact. Kindly watch a video clip from 2012. This video clip has two sections. First section clearly shows that Anthony Fauci on behalf of NIAID and NIH was funding highly controversial gain of function research of mutant H5N1 variant. You would also see Ron Fouché talking about his research on H5N1 mutant variant. In the second part of the same video clip, you would see Anthony Fauci speaking on behalf of NIH on gain of function research. This is to let you know that discussions on gain of function research of mutant H5N1 virus happened a long time back. And today, after nine years, Anthony Fauci is accused of funding yet another gain of function research, and this time the gain of function research of novel coronavirus, that is SARS CoV 2, is of concern. Well, everything happened under the nose of successive American governments, whether it is Democrats. Or Republicans and now that Fauci's emails got leaked to the public domain Republicans are trying to save America's face and nothing else the topic of this morning's session <clears throat> is the publication of research involving the h1n1 avian influenza adaptation to mammalian hosts and we have a great panel here from with very different perspectives on this problem that we're going to get a chance to hear from so this research that we're going to be talking about today was performed at Erasmus University under the direction of Dr. Ron Fouché, who is one of our panelists, will be our first speaker. <clears throat> this research was performed and then written up and submitted to Science Magazine for publication. Uh, that science manuscript, of course, went through the hands of the editor-in-chief, uh, Dr. Bruce Alberts, who's uh, also one of our panelists this morning, will be presenting the perspectives from the Science Magazine. In the process of doing the research and in preparing the manuscript for publication, it was identified as being potentially dual use research of concern, or what we like to call DERC. And so as being identified by the US government as being dual use research of concern, it was sent to the National Science Advisory Board for review and recommendations. Now, it was the US government then that tasked the National Science Advisory Board to review this and representing the U.S. government and the funding agency for this research is Dr. Tony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, again one of our panelists. <clears throat> Very pleased to have him here as well. So after the paper, at a nearly identical timeline, 
to what was happening with Dr. Fouché's uh, research in Science Magazine. A second group at the University of Wisconsin, headed by Yoshi Kawaoka, was doing similar types of, of research in adapting the H5N1 virus to mammals. And this research was written up and submitted to Nature Magazine. And likewise, this research was funded by the National Institutes of Health. And in the process of the research and in the publication, it was identified as potentially, again, dual use research of concern. And this paper was also forwarded simultaneously with the Fouché paper to the National Science Advisory Board for Biosecurity for review. So when it got there, it was reviewed and, and, the, and the NSABB made recommendations and representing the NSABB today is Dr. Mike Osterholm, who is a member of the, uh, the, the NSAB since uh, 2004. And likewise, I'm the acting chair of that board at this time. So the two of us represent then uh, the National Science Advisory Board for Biosecurity. So the recommendations that the NSABB came back with was that these, these papers would in fact not be published in full. We recommended to the US government that the papers be modified, the results and experimental details be redacted so that somebody with malevolent intent could not exactly replicate the results. And that was a recommendation that went back to the US government. The US government then accepted those recommendations and went back to the journals and to the investigators. So today we have a lot to talk about, but one of the things we can't talk about are the actual details of these papers. Uh, the, the details are still confidential as per the NSABB recommendation. And so we won't get down to that level of detail today, but I assure you there are many things to talk about because of these recommendations. I've tasked the panelists to first try to communicate to you exactly what has occurred and, what the, and then what the implications and future are in this area. Each of them have a very unique perspective on, what's, uh, on this work and uh, will uh, obviously not always agree. We'll try to get through these talks in time to have about 20 minutes of question and answer. And so uh, scribble down your questions and hop to the microphone fast after the last speaker. So with that, I'd like to invite Dr. Fouché to the, to the uh, podium. Thank you, Paul. I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, allowing me to speak here. Uh, in the next 10 minutes, I will run through the experiments uh, globally, what we have done, <coughs> why we have done it, <coughs> and why, uh, what the context of these experiments was. And also, I take some time to, uh, to get rid of some of the misperceptions that have come uh, through the uh, lay press about our work. This work was done uh, by a large team of investigators in my laboratory. Uh, uh, in the first place, Sander Harris, a postdoc in my laboratory. <clears throat> so this work really got started uh, back in 1997 when <clears throat> there was the first uh, incidence of human exposure to fully avian, highly pathogenic H5N1 virus, in including the first human deaths uh, related to this virus. I turn the podium over to Dr. Tony Fauci now. Tony. Thank you very much, Paul. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to go as quickly as possible through this because I really feel we need to get some chance to have some discussion. So I'm going to focus fundamentally on the government response to the recommendations and the subsequent events, but I also want to give a really brief background about why we feel uh, at the NIH why these studies are important. It really goes back several years when we first uh, became really quite aware of the threat of pandemic influenza. This was a government-wide involving CDC, FDA, the department, and the NIH and other agencies to develop a strategic pandemic influenza preparedness plan. As you see here, it involves multiple components from surveillance through research, including vaccines, antivirals, communications, et cetera. At the NIH, as many of you know, our research agendas with influenza include a variety of issues going from fundamental basic research to clinical research and focusing on the development of therapeutics, vaccines, and diagnostics. This has been accompanied by a very robust increase in the resources allocated to influenza. As you see here, we went from a relatively small amount, and then when you had the real acceleration of interest in the H5N1, particularly in Southeast Asia and Northern Africa, we had a major increase in our influenza. This flatness of the curve just reflects everything that's gone of the NIH over the last several years. 
With that, the influenza basic research will put aside clinical trials, we'll put aside therapeutics, and look at what we do for basic research. As you can see, it involves issues from viral evolution, immune response, pathogenesis, molecular analysis, but particularly and importantly, the work that you just heard from Dr. Fouché, namely host adaptation and transmissibility, which is actually the aim of the studies that were done. And as Dr. Fouché very correctly said, this was work that we were interested in pursuing and felt were very, very important in our ability to address the issue of pandemic influenza in general, and specifically H5N1 as a threat. Thank you very much, Harvey. It's a great pleasure to be here with you this morning. Uh, I want to take this opportunity, uh, as you see on this first slide, <clears throat> to first welcome you all. I know I see so many friends and colleagues in the room who have traveled a great distance to be here with us today to discuss this extraordinarily important topic, but also to give a brief overview, as Harvey said, uh, a considerable amount of the activity that goes on in this area from a research standpoint comes from the NIH and NIAID. As you know, we're part of the Department of Health and Human Services, as is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who also have a considerable amount of contributions, both from a public health surveillance as well as from a research standpoint in the topic for today, which is gain of function research on highly pathogenic avian influenza H5N1. In the first section of the video clip, you have clearly seen that this gain of function research was dubbed as dual use research of concern, that is DURK, in the United States of America itself. DURC or DURK is a life science research based on current understanding can be reasonably anticipated to provide knowledge, information, products, or technologies that could be directly misapplied, misapplied to pose a significant threat with broad potential consequences to public health and safety. And this is American definition of DURK, that is dual use research of concern. However, Fauci and gang tried to justify this research by stating that they were exploring the possibility whether a zoonotic virus strain can mutate and evolve through the involvement of an intermediate host into a pathogen that could affect human beings. And in such an imaginary pandemic scenario, this research would help them to find the therapeutics and vaccines. This is how they actually presented this fact to the public. Gain of function research sparked a global controversy and experts demanded such experiments be defunded and shut down. Experts raised concerns that such experiments could lead to a global pandemic or even bioterrorism. This is the reason why American administration had sent the research papers to NSABB, that is National Security Advisory Board for Biosecurity, and NSABB recommended that the confidentiality and secrecy of the research findings be maintained. Obama administration defunded many such projects in 2014 following a criticism and concerns raised by the experts. Although Obama administration, that is the Democrats, funded this gain of function research between 2008 and 2012. But Donald Trump administration, that is the Republicans, restarted funding this gain of function research in 2017. Thus, both Democrats and Republicans are equally responsible for this crime against humanity. Viewers might ask whether they were actually preparing a ground or setting a precedence or a pretext for this current coronavirus pandemic that a zoonotic virus such as bat coronavirus might also mutate and evolve into a pathogen like novel coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2 to attack human beings and which would also allow them through their mainstream media to propagate the lab leak stories. Well, viewers can draw their own conclusion. It seems as if this dirty game was started by United States of America and Britain and China's involvement is a more recent one. I'm going to discuss all these things in future videos. Well, I'm not bothered to know how pathogenic this SARS-CoV-2 is, 
but it seems as if that somebody was preparing a ground for this pandemic a long time back. My question is, what was our external intelligence apparatus, that is research and analysis wing, that is R and AW, was doing all these days between 2014 to 2020 under hyper-nationalist Modi Sarkar? This implies that either this government is complicit in this or they're a bunch of worthless idiots. Indian TV media do not question these people such as Anthony Fauci. They would rather listen to these comebacks like obedient people and our social media is a copy paste of our mainstream media. Kindly share this video with your loved ones and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.